Uh, good morning. Um, Dan, thank you for the introduction. Um, I am very glad uh, to introduce uh, some of the, my uh, recent, res recent research uh, on uh, battery technology. Uh, as you know that uh, actually in the south, we call it um, the, um, the corridor, corridor for automotive technology. They're starting from that South Carolina to that Georgia and go to Alabama to the Mississippi, where Nissan put actually their plant in Mississippi, and Hyundai Gear plant their plant in Alabama, and also um, Daimler Chrysler, and also the Honda and the Toyota, and the Kia put their plant in Georgia, and the BMW put actually plant in that um, uh, South Carolina. So that actually this is kind of a corridor that we do have um, automotive manufacturing that we haven't have that uh, 10 years ago. So is that emerging, um, I would say that um, industry in this area. Um, with that respect, um, my talk today is that focus on um, transportation, particularly the energy storage. Um, the um, title of my talk is that the high resolution of lithium ion batteries and uh, its applications. So let me start with uh, uh, let me start off reviewing the trend of uh, um, the propulsion systems. Um, as you know that the efficiency, efficiency of um, the energy in vehicle is the very, very important issues. It's so important for all of the us. And when you um, map all of the current development on proportion system in um, X and Y axis, where the X is that the electric power, electric power that is integrated in the vehicles. On the Y axis is that improvement of uh, fuel uh, efficiency. And you will see that there are so many uh, developments going on. The first thing that you can recognize is that um, we do have a start alternator in a range of um, the one to three kilowatt. This is a relatively small electric power, while uh, go up to that um, the plug-in hybrid, uh, where is that electric power go up to um, 40, 50 kilowatt. Um, in order to keep that electric power in a vehicle, so you need uh, any storage. Uh, any storage is started with uh, actually um, um, in this area where you see some of uh, the um, Honda Insight or to the Prius that you, you have heard of that, you are aware of that. Um, those are the vehicles that is starting uh, employing battery technology like uh, um, nickel metal hydride technology, okay? Uh, and then um, this area is that battery like a lead acid battery is used actually for that area. So currently is that starting from that the development from these sectors and go up to, well, this is one direction, as you heard of the plug-in hybrid, is one direction. Other direction is that go down that area, uh, which is called uh, mild hybrid or micro hybrid, where still is that um, uh, lead acid battery is uh, um, considered for that purpose. The idea is that if you um, implement idle stop, idle stop means that whatever is car is a stop, at any um, traffic light or whatever it is, and the engine will be shut down. And then um, in that way is that you can save the energy that is typically um, five to seven percent. Um, so that is a, there is a, um, the one is that here lead is the battery that located in this area. And this is a liquid metal hydride as battery technology. And top of this area is that um, the lithium uh, lithium ion batteries. So that three these uh, battery technologies are competing each other. And this is the one of the issue. Second issue is that um, since the battery that is used for diesel power frequently charged 
discharged. So that is uh, um, the battery management is the one of the important issue in order to prevent um, the degradation of that battery that used in the vehicle. Um, when we look into the battery system that, that integrated into uh, in the vehicle, this is the one that I um, copied actually um, for um, plug-in hybrid that is currently used in uh, a Chevy Volt. And uh, um, you have uh, around uh, more than 200 cells, 200 cells of the lithium polymer batteries. And also you will see that on the other side, you see that a lot of cells are connected in series and parallel. Um, the battery cell that is used for that system is like uh, um, this one, which is called uh, the pouch type of lithium polymer batteries the with that current tap on that side. Um, for example, this is the size of the, um, the eight by 10 inch. Um, you see that cell demand eight by 10 inch. And the uh, chemistry that is used is that um, the lithium um, um, uh, metal oxide and the negative um, is that and the carbon. So um, the lot of this cell, as I said, is connected in the series or, or um, parallel. Um, the question is that uh, how we can um, understand actually the basic principle of the batteries. Um, the one, one of the approach that has been out there for engineers is that uh, based on the electrical um, circuit motors, um, the batteries, um, it's just a look into from the terminal so that uh, the terminal voltage is measured and then inside of dynamics is the mimicked with that one voltage source and then a um, couple of the resistors and capacitors, capacitors and connected in the series and that actually is used to represent some of uh, the, um, the behavior of that. However, since this battery, large format of the battery is used in that hybrid vehicle, this cannot simply can use it because that ignore a lot of the physical effect. For example, um, the temporary dependency, and then also the state of a charge. State of a charge means that, like uh, um, um, the um, the um, the um, how how much of your storage is the um, the charge, and then also um, the durations. Um, the mechanism that is not reflected in that in the model, so that this model cannot be used actually for large format of the cells. Um, so the other approach is that um, this is the cells, and uh, when you look at using the SEM and the end of the catalyst, you will see that a lot of the particles actually the particles that mix with electrolyte. And this is that can be approximated with that um, you have uh, the separator and also you have negative electrode and positive electrode with uh, mixed with uh, these particles. So um, when you are charge is charged, actually the, um, the ions moved from that one, one elect, um, electrode to the other electrode and the vice versa. So the, this is a just a, we call it microcell. This is the, just a small this, uh, part of the, these cells. Once we um, know that this mechanism, we, we can um, integrate from that x and y direction, and then we are going to get the complete uh, behavior of these uh, um, the cells. Um, so, so as I said that basically. Um, these are microcells. What happened in the microcells, actually? Um, when you charge and discharge, actually, and uh, there is a current, the current is basically by the ionic um, the current, the consider ionic current and the electronic current. So you see this is that um, the particles, particles in the each electrode, and so that is uh, whatever these uh, um, ions in integrated, how many ions in that these particles that present actually the stable charge, and uh, when um, have a, a lower number of the ions in the particles, that is a low SOC, and the other side is a high SOC. Um, however, 
the, the mechanism, mechanism of, of uh, um, lithium batteries, um, as I said, I cannot simply be um, represented. Uh, since uh, uh, when the battery is uh, charging discharge, and uh, the first thing is that it's the heat generated. Okay, In generation of heat determined actually the, um, the duration process and also the, the performances. And also um, when the battery charge is charged and uh, the ions, the ions will be intercalated in that lattice of the structure. It's like a human being. It's like when the ions into that particles, um, the volume will be uh, ex expanded. And when the ions are removed, then it's the volume is contracted. So that there is that um, mechanical um, stress is formed, actually. And then also corresponding degradation. So that it representing, actually, um, multi-scale and multi-physics problems that is coupled by the electrochemistry problems and also thermal and uh, mechanical problems. So um, um, we actually um, the coupled all of these mechanisms. And I'm going to show you some of the results what, um, what you have obtained. Um, um, this schematic diagram shows that um, this is the individual microcells, and they're connected in parallel, so in order to get uh, complete um, the model of the cells. And then is that uh, we can enter initial conditions, um, SOC and the different load files and temperature, dispersion, amb ambient temperature, so that when you enter these conditions, you are going to get uh, voltage profile and then also the SOC and the, some other um, the key parameters uh, for the performance. Um, here shows that uh, some of the, um, the, the result. Um, this is a typical um, discharging characteristic depend on that what kind of current you apply to that. On the right side, you will see that some of the dynamic response depends on that SOC percentage. And uh, um, here shows that actually the ion concentration, ion concentration at the discharging. And this is that ion profile it, that shows one is that another side, one is a cathode side, and depend on that um, time, how the ions are moved from the one particle, inside of particle to that other side of the particle. Um, this plot shows actually um, the potential distributions, the potential distribution of that, um, the uh, one is that positive cells, a positive um, side, or other is negative side, and the right side is that you will see that current vector, how the current is that flow. You see that at the tab area, you have a high density of current, while the other area is that less density of the current. Um, this model uh, has been validated for the cell, as I said, that as a lithium polymer battery. Um, so this is that um, discharging characteristics and temperature, and here is that charging characteristic with the temperature. Um, also, the temperature distributions can be um, captured, and also um, is a, um, the result of simulation is comparable to that experimental result. Um, this, um, this chart shows that um, heat generation rate. Um, we measured, actually, heat generation rate in a cell um, using a meters that we designed uh, in my, our lab. Uh, so when the uh, um, battery is discharged and charged, and you see that um, at the discharging, and the more heat generated than actually the charging process. This is the one thing that um, we, um, is, is, um, we found out. And the second thing is that uh, when the, the current goes down, goes down actually, and we expect that there is no heat generation. However, there is a continuous heat generation with a certain time constant, and that um, determines actually the calendar life of the batteries. Um, and the other thing is that uh, we um, designed equipment that is used to measure the change of thickness 
Um, since that, um, as I said, that um, there is a volume change of electrodes in, uh, for the integration, the integration process, and we measured actually the, how the thickness will be changed actually. Um, because if you integrate it, integrated um, the cells, 100 cells, without considering the thickness changes of uh, um, that battery, you are going to have a big problem actually in the packaging. And also, um, that has a direct impact on duration process of the battery. That's the reason the thickness changes is very important. And uh, um, so, when you cycle it, when you cycle a battery, and uh, um, the measurement shows that, also we calculate that, is overall the cells that we are using has around the 50 micrometer, micrometers um, thickness changes, actually. However, this is pretty consistent. It doesn't uh, change a lot, depends on um, the current that you apply that. However, um, when you calculate, actually, this is a, the, the cell setup. You have a one separator on the, on the left side, you have an anode current. On the right side is that cathode side. And uh, this one shows that, actually, the, um, the stress, stress at the particle. So what, what you say that is that overall is a stress and the anode is that larger than the cathode. And also, when the current increased, that is, uh, you experience um, the, the high pressure um, is that produced actually and the separate side. Um, so this is that um, um, we, we, we copied actually the, the, the SM picture from that uh, the paper published here to authors. Uh, when you see that here, anode and cathode, this is a separator, and you see that a little bit dark areas, dark area, and you see that more fracture is, uh, is observed. And that proves actually that the stress on that the separate side is that more, um, um, uh, more generated, and that affect actually the fracture of that, uh, this part. Um, on the other side, and so far is that this investigation, this research is good for um, academic uh, research. On the other side, as I said at the beginning, um, battery management is a very important issue since the battery is a frequently charging discharged for different um, the operations. Um, battery management systems, that basically is that you have a battery packs and you measure um, the current and the voltage and temperature. Okay, these are three uh, physical quantities are measured. And uh, based on that, it's basically um, there are a couple of that functionalities like uh, thermal management or charging to charging controls and uh, health monitoring is the one of the important issues. You wanted to know when the battery will be dead, actually. And uh, those are the, um, um, the basic functionalities. Um, when we review that, the models that are available for current batteries, um, this is the part that I presented just before. The uh, other one is that the BMS functionality is that mostly is that developed or implemented based on the electric, electric equivalent circuit models or empirical models. Um, however, these models have very um, high computational um, time and also it's very accurate. However, the BMS mostly is required real-time um, capabilities that cannot be met by these uh, um, high-resolution models. So what, what it needed is that, so we need uh, extra models, extra models that, can, that should be extracted, that can be extracted for these models that has uh, real-time capabilities. So which is called that uh, reduced order models, reduced order models, there are several methods how you can, um, the, the very um, the complicated model can be reduced. Um, the one of the approach that we made is that um, we have, uh, battery is basically is that consists of uh, three parts. 
the ion concentrations and the ion concentration electrode and the electrolyte and the potentials, all of these part is that you reduced using that um, um, mathematical met method. One is the state-based approach, other is the preliminary approach, and then also some of the simplifications so that we can substantially reduce actually to models for real-time applications. Um, here is that the models, uh, real-time models uh, for validations. Um, what we did is that uh, we changed the current, we changed the uh, temperature range from the zero to 45 degrees C and at the different cycles. And as you see that it's a pretty much is a follow actually the temperature rise here and also the terminal voltage, and etc. Um, on the other hand, is that the SOC estimation? SOC estimation is like a, a, you know fuel tank. How much fuel you have in that fuel tank? Um, the currently the overall the errors for estimation of SOC is seventy ten percent. Ten percent mean that if we have a forty kilowatt installed in the vehicle. And the four kilowatt and cannot be accurately estimated. That means that we are losing actually um, partial the capability of the battery. Okay. On the other hand, is that when the car is uh, um, 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 turned off, and then is that the BMS that is basically electronics do not know what what is the inertial state. So that is there are these two key issues. So in order to solve this one, and we apply the two things. One is that we use the advanced um, feedback controls, and then we use the previous uh, real-time models. And you see here is this one of the batteries, okay? And we have the um, validated ROM, and we're using that um, feedback loop to measure or estimate this SOC, and then also um, some other um, uh, parameters. So this is a typical the test conditions um, is electric vehicle mode. And then um, we use that actuality model to predict the voltage, terminal voltage and then SOC. And you see that even though in the energy conditions and quickly captured because of that, um, the effect in feedback controls. And that was also tested with uh, the multiple cycles with that um, the pulses. So next one is that um, um, how you can use the actual digital model for health monitoring of battery. Uh, one of the, which is called the state of health. State of health, health means that is that um, the capacity fade, there is a power fade, there is two fades in that battery is going on. So that uh, how we can estimate actually the capacity fade or power fade. And uh, similarly, and you have the ROM with that um, feedback loop so that uh, you can estimate actually um, the battery state. So this is the result. So usually when, um, when you cycle the batteries, okay, batteries, and there is uh, degradations um, taking place. So that this degradation, one is the experimental part, the other one is the simulations, so that you can predict what is that battery degradation after you have the couple of cycles. Um, the last topics, how, how we can apply, apply that um, to the modeling capability. Um, you know that is uh, one of uh, the technical barriers for commercialization of the electric vehicle is uh, charging time. Okay, charging time. Currently, is that is uh, mostly is that seven to eight hours is that um, for charging time. If you take a six kilowatt and plug in your garage, the, the power into your garage, if you do that rapid charging, actually you can reduce the, um, the less than one hour, but still is that at least you need a half an hour to charge your battery. So that is not acceptable for market. The question is that what limit actually this charging? Okay, why we can't actually um, rapid charging? So one of that, these, uh, um, the limiting factor is that which is called the lithium plating. What is lithium plating? Lithium plating is that caused by actually lithium ions. When you charge the battery and you send uh, actually more charges that actually the anode can accept, okay? Um, this caused actually lithium ion, lithium ion is combined with that um, the electrons 
and then formed a solid radar, solid radar here. And if you continuously charging to charging, and this going to form a crack, and that formed a dendrite, and finally it could lead to internal short circuit or accelerate integration. So one of the these factor is that uh, okay, limit that um, actually the the concentrations, concentrations at uh, um, limited concentration that is the end of the um, end of the can accept. So this is uh, what you calculated when when you charge it um, with that high current. Of course, you have a short charging time. Okay, here charging profile and the voltage charging profile. However, when you calculate the ion concentrations at the surface, at the surface, you will see that this is the excessive ions, excessive that is not accepted by the anode. So this is the one of the reasons that actually limit that rapid charging. So the idea is that, okay, how we can limit um, these excessive ion concentrations uh, so you have a battery, you can use that the electrochemical based real-time models, and you can make a feedback loop, and then you limit that actually the, um, the ion concentrations. And then also use the pulse generator, or there can be two level or three level, you, 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 you control that um, charging or discharging current that flow into the battery. Um, here is that um, the experimental result that shows that Okay, um, here is that current profile. The current profile that goes to here is the maximum, and go down and, and then charging to charging, charging um, to charging. So that continuously, so that is, uh, um, you can completely charge the battery. Um, when you do that like this one, um, this is the temperature rise in a cell. Um, temperature is compared to that, uh, the charging method that currently used, it's less heat generated. And also, the, this is a calculated the ion concentration. Ion concentration is limited to that values that prevent actually lithium plating. Um, this is the result with respect to um, capacity fade. Um, we cycled it with that method. We compared with that current method and other method. And we did it with around 100 cycles. So that is that this is the method that we are proposing, and this is that the method that is currently is that used. So the bottom line is that um, when you use the actually these models and uh, control the profile for your charging or discharging current, you can um, slow down degradation rate, and at the same time you can reduce that actually the, um, the charging time. So summary. Um, I think is that it's very important. Important to understand the mechanism of the, um, the batteries. Batteries, uh, in order to understand the battery, battery is not just uh, current voltage temperature. Uh, there is a multiphasics that is need to be involved uh, from the particle to that top levels. Um, based on this understanding, so um, we we show that okay, what you can do. You can do that. Optimize your cell design, or you can do that system design. System design means that whatever you have 100 cells connected in series on parallel, how you, um, it should be connected in order to optimize all of these cell configuration. And also the coolant system. And we show that how to accurately estimate the SOC, or how you accurately predict the temperature, or how you slow down your degradation rate. Also, we show them how you um, reduce the charging time, okay, where the duration will be slowed down. Okay? And then also, you can use that also um, for health monitoring. So um, this is that the summary of my talk. Um, and uh, um, let us see that. OK, thank you for your attention. Um, OK, that's all my, my talk. Thank you. Take any questions at this point. We have one up here.
Uh, my name's Austin from the University of Florida. Thank you very much for that talk. Um, I just had a quick question. You talked about reducing the charging time. What levels have you gotten it down to more quantitatively? Um, so we, 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 we took just one cell. Okay, out of 200 cells or more than 100 cells, we took just one cell. And uh, it shows that we can reduce 50% of the current charging time. So without any, um, you know, any um, degradation compared to current charging or usually w what we are doing with the cell phone or what all of the battery is that uh, charging method is a current, um, constant current, constant voltage charging. Okay, we compare with a constant current, constant voltage charging and we can reduce the 50% of the current charging technology. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Can one use these models to predict run temperature runaway and uh, those types of phenomena? Um, th this is this is an ongoing um, the research actually. Um, there is a two um, two topics still is not well addressed from the the um, electrochemistry aspect or or physics aspect. The one is that um, the aging process. Aging process is not well understood. Okay, well understood, the mechanism, okay. Um, the, from temperature from the zero to 45 degree is that well predictable. However, when the temperature go to low areas, that means a minus 40 degree, for example. What is that mechanism involved in that process is not well known. So I couldn't find any single paper that theoretically explain what is the reason. This is something that is uh, uh, academic society uh, should address, actually. Okay, um, so other than that one is that um, um, pretty much is that, is that predictable, okay. all right? And uh, still there is a sum of uh, the heat generation rate. I, I skipped just very quickly. Heat generation rate in a cell is that, is not accurately understood, but it's, uh, there is an ongoing effort that predict actually how the thermal runaway might take place. Okay, that is coupled with that some research in materials and then also some issues and then also some of other issues. Um, yeah. Another one up here. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was really interested in your, your pulse charging and I was wondering if you had played with the pulse rates and maybe the pulse durations to see what would the optimal charging pulse be? Um, it, do you understand the basic idea? Basic idea is that so currently, so including your battery for your cell phone, all of the batteries, okay, is that simply you charged and discharged and looking at whether you have the cutoff voltage, right? It does not care where your battery is suffering or not. Okay, so when you charging discharging continuously, and then you open up, okay, you you put the materials on the SEM or you know some of the XRD some other method, and you find out there is a lithium plating. Lithium plating is that one of that the limiting factor to limit fast charging. The question is what caused actually the lithium plating? Lithium plating is caused okay a lot of things. The one of them is uh, what? It's an excessive ions. That means that when you send out charging meter, when you send out ions from that cathode to anode, there are so many ions around there. Some ions are hanging, hanging around there. They do not have the room they enter. Okay? And they combine with that electrons and materials from the solid lead. And when you continue to charge it, and that accelerates actually the integration process. That's the reason you can't charge it with a high C rate high current. So how you can measure the excessive ions, or how you can measure the ion concentrations? So unless you have an in situ sensors that place in the set, but that's not possible. Okay, only way, the way how you can do that is that using a model. Model that is capable of running in the real time. Okay, so these models, 
is that there is a two different type of models. One is electrochemical thermal models, and the other way is equivalent circuit models. Equivalent circuit models do not provide actually this information. That's the reason that we develop a models based on electrochemical thermal, mechanical stress models, and that model is a, that model are capable of providing information on ion concentration. So that if you use that this ion concentration as a limiting factor, you charging it, discharging it, okay. You can keep that same degradation, or you can extend this e extraction, but you can reduce that actually, right, charging time. This is the basic ideas. But up to now is that, uh, you know, there is some papers and ideas out there. Okay, if you charge a pulse charging, okay, you can save something, but do not, didn't know that, what caused that actually. Okay, this is the basic idea for pulse charging. So again, this is one of uh, the applications that you can make out of this uh, high resolution model. Okay. Okay, let's thank Dr. Cho. Okay, thank you. I can walk up. <laughs>